What's good? It's your boy CJ Goodfellow. We back with Motor City Lions Talk, and we're um, previewing and predicting uh, Detroit Lions traveling up to Minnesota to take on the Vikings at that nice, new, beautiful stadium that they do have. Um, last year, I believe the Lions swept the Vikings. The year before, I think the Lions swept. <laughs> I think the Vikings swept the Lions, and then I think the year before that, we swept the Lions. We swept the Vikings. So it's always an interesting fight. Interesting, you might as well call it a fight, a dog fight when we play the Minnesota Vikings. Um, they, if you are not familiar with the Minnesota Vikings, and I don't know which Lions fans that are not, um, I guess they're very casual Lions fans, but um, or anybody that's you know using the video to gauge for bets. But um, Minnesota is built nasty in their front seven. I mean, um, Everson Griffin is one of my favorite pass rushers to watch. Um, I used to be a pass rusher in high school, so in college, it's one of my favorite ones to watch, man. Um, uh, they they got a lot of talent over there. Roberson, he's been there for a long time, coming off that left end, um, a long time. Sharif Floyd is still there. Eric Kendricks. Middle linebacker Anthony Barr is one of the most athletic outside linebackers. Their front seven is definitely is definitely a force to be reckoned with, I must say. And their back end is okay with Harrison Smith. We know about him. Um, also Xavier Rose, who was turned into one of the you know top ten cornerbacks now, maybe a little higher, and they've been performing very well. Um, can't say that for uh, Trey Wayne's. You know, you really can't. He it seems like they pulled him the other day. I think. Um, he's from Michigan State, and I'm pretty you know a lot of Spartans know who Trey Wayne's is. Um, it takes a couple, a few years for for a cornerback to get it. The real Reavers didn't come in and become Reavers Island in one year. It took him a few years. It took Darius Slay a few years. So um, he's still learning. Cornerback position is one of those hard positions to adjust to. You look at the other Sparty, Dark Pez Denar with the Cincinnati Bengals. He been there for what, two years now, his third year or whatever. And it's starting to click because I watched him yesterday, uh, last week with the, the Packers and the Bengals. It's starting to click for him. So, Trey Wayne's a get it. He's a talented young guy. And then if you look at the Minnesota offense, it's basically, uh, like it's going to be Case Keenum. Keenum. Uh, Bradford might be out a while. He might return this week, but I don't think so with that knee injury. Um, if you don't know, the Lions was going to draft Sam Bradford, but he chose to go back to school and we ended up with, uh, Matt Stafford, which was the most greatest thing that ever happened in life. <laughs> And the worst thing happened for Sam Bradford because he went to a, a St. Louis and um, got injured. But um, Case Keenum, um, he's respectable as a backup. Uh, we know backups, you know, kind of kill Lions over the career. But Case Keenum respectable. He had 300 yards in the first three quarters versus Tampa Bay. But Tampa Bay is absolute garbage on the defensive side and the offensive line as well. So you can't really use that as a gauge. But Keenum is, he's respectable. He's functional back there. Dal Dalvin Cook is a good running back. Um, that people overlook because he wasn't the fast switchy running back, you know, with the short zone at the prime bind. But as you can tell, he's just a football player, one of the better uh, Florida State running backs. And they got a nice little lineage now since uh, Jimbo Fisher took over with Devontae Freeman and um, Dalvin Cook. Um, Laquan Twerwell still hasn't showed up this season, but we they, the Vikings have two good receivers. Um, I'm not, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but Adam Delaney, Dylan. Um, mo a very productive receiver, six two, good route runner, um, always open. And Stephon Diggs, another one that's always open. Hey, he can break the reception record at any given time. And you know, you know they got that nice tight end and um, um, Kyle Rudolph, and then Riley Reef is on the offensive line, which I'm not too big on the offensive line though. But you know, it is what it is. Um, we know what the Lions bring to the table. Hopefully, uh, Jared Davis will be back. And uh, Tev, uh, Tavon Wilson, I think he missed last week as well, will be back. And you can tell the difference in the run game with Tyra Whitehead and, and where he's maybe playing outside. It's just totally night and day. And Jerry Davis is shows his absence, shows how big he was in the lack of the run and lacking the run support. Um, also in coverage, because then you have Reese Maven trying to make a play that Tyra Whitehead tried, was trying to make, and he wouldn't make it. He's not supposed to make He's a six round rookie. He's still developing. So there's no reason to get mad at Reese Maven. It's a learning experience, and I'm guaranteed that he's going to get better from that. 
So that's the positive thing coming coming out from that. When you got young guys on there that haven't played, they're getting experience and they're going to get better. Trust me, a guy like Reese Mammon will get better. Um, you look at um, the matchup overall in the whole, um, basically it's going to be about stopping Delvin Cook and, f- and forcing Case Keenan to throw outside the numbers. You um, you want a guy that has lackluster arm strength in Case, case Keenum. I, at best, I think he has below NFL arm strength. You want to force the ball outside the numbers. You want to take away the middle because he's accurate now in the middle. He he's accurate, you know, in the short to intermediate passes. But you want to make him throw outside the numbers. You want to take away. You want to try to take away um, the slants. You want to make coverage tight. And if you in zone, you want to make those those holes and them soft spots tighter. You want him to throw the ball downfield in case Keenum. That's what you want him to do. He don't have an arm. And push it outside the numbers. You want him to throw the out route because it's going to um, it's going to flutter. It's going to sail. That's what you want. You want to stop Delvin Cook. You want to take away those short little uh, swing passes that Atlanta had last week. That was exposed to Jerry Davis one here. And you want to get up the field and rush Case Keenum. You know you don't want to let him get those short intermediate passes because he will eat you up. And that's what he did with Tampa Bay last week. And you want and you want to t- you want to t- make Stephon. Diggs, um, you know, go deep. I know it sounds crazy, but he's good intermediate and Adam. He's good intermediate. They catch a lot of balls underneath. They chain movers. Um, you want to make them, um, you know, run deeper patterns because when you make them run deeper patterns, Case Keenum don't have an arm. That's not an indictment on the, uh, the Vikings receivers, indictment on Case Keenum. You don't, you want to take away that short intermediate stuff for Case Keenum, trust me. Cause you let him step back and throw short and dink and dink and dunk all day, he will. You want to make him throw outside the numbers, play tight coverage, and bump and run with those receivers, and make him and make and make and let your pass rush do the job and for for the Lions offense. Um, um, basically establish some type of run game, but the Vikings are piss poor in pass uh, defense. Like I said, they do have Xavier Rhodes. Um. And they and they, uh, they allow seventy percent um, passes completed, but you want to be able to run the ball as well. You want to establish a run versus that front seven, um, and it's possible because when you have pass rushers like Everson Griffin and Brian Roberson and Sharif Floyd, those are pass rushers. You are able to run the ball. You know, you're able to get the ball and um, and do some things. And, and Abdullah has to hit the hole with some conviction. You know. Um, and, and, and as far as the pass game, you want to exploit that second cornerback position. You want to exploit the slot. You want to explo- you want to exploit Ebron. You know Ebron should have a good matchup with a linebacker. Ebron should be a, a nightmare mismatch, but he doesn't catch the ball. So I don't I don't know where they go. I tied in from here because he had a horrible week. Um, I even threw out the the idea of them trying to go snag Jimmy Graham. Um. I think it will work because Seattle has no clue to how to use them. Uh, but, but as far as uh, for the Lions, you know, um, it's definitely about um, exploiting and moving the chains on that seventy percent pass defense they're allowing. Um, you know, working the slot. Um, you know, getting your one on ones with your safeties and your and your linebackers with your with your tight end. Your running backs out the backfield. Anthony Barr is not that great in coverage, covering the running back. He's more of a pass rusher. Um, Eric Kendricks is good in coverage, especially in the zone. But it's about getting. It's about matchups. Same thing with Atlanta last week. You know they had to match up with Ebron on the linebackers. That was the matchup. He didn't win it. We lost. You know. But Golden Tate does well versus the, uh, the Vikings. So you wants to hit Golden Tate, and uh, Marvin Jones must show up. He's not playing well this season. I understand he's going against dominant uh, corners, but he has to win more than just one touchdown, one and one or two catches. He has to win, and if he doesn't win, then that's just you know that's another receiver taken out to the, another option taken out, and you down a a few options on the field. So if he continues not to win, the Lions have to do something different with him. They have to put him in positions to win or whatever that is. Maybe putting him in the slot, um, you know, putting him in unbumpable route uh, route uh, routes, you know, but um. They have to do something different. But uh, the way I see this game going, uh, I'm going to liken the Lions 28 to um, the Vikings 14. 
I think Stafford has a big day. I think Golden Tate has a big day. And I think Abdullah and Theo Reddick have big days at the backfield. We gone.